Been audibles. So, I tried this, right? And I, y'all gotta forgive me, man. I jumped out there. I was like, ah, I'm about to start doing all my, my visuals and stuff for the podcast. Look, man. And then I realized I can't curate the video the same way I curate the show. You feel me? But then I had to sit and think the true essence of the show is just speaking authentically. So I said, fuck it. We're going to do this vlog style. I got with Neezy. I was like, Neezy, what you think I should do? Blah, blah, blah. Here we are. So we're just going to rock it like this going forward. Hopefully Neezy could splice up the edits to make it look good. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just going to give you all the best of me. And we're going to take it from there, man. You know? Shout out to the Naturally Name. Moisturizer Duel. You feel me? Going to get my day started with that. Make sure I got all, all the hydration that I need. Because it's been hot out here, man. Drying out and all that. But... We're going to do things a little bit different, man. I was trying to do all, you know what I'm saying, like the quick edits and, and doing all that, the popular topics. Man, y'all can't see me, right? Or at least hear from me and what we're talking about. So I just want to be able to take y'all, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to take y'all behind the lens, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Like behind like what really be going on in the making the show, the brand, all of that. Because needs to be showing y'all the fun side. I'm about to show y'all the work side. But it's going to be fun in the process because I'm passionate about what it is that I do. You know, but I need y'all help. Tell me how this worked. You know what I'm saying? As far as like the vlog, my bad. Just the oil. You gotta put the oil in. You put the moisturizer in. Then you put the oil in to seal it. You know what I'm saying? Needs is a genius. She came up with it. But anyway, yeah. Tell me how this worked, man. Cause I heard you can't cuss as much on YouTube. If that shit is true, man, then I don't know how this is gonna work. Cause like when I used to like mentor at the schools and stuff back in Detroit, I used to say, if I can't come and talk to your kids real. I don't want to talk to them because the world is real. And, you know, I'm not about to be out here sugarcoating nothing or, or, you know what I'm saying, candy coating anything for these kids, man. And I'm not going to do the same for y'all either. So I'm going to give it to y'all raw, authentic, and organic. And you're going to like it. Skeet of the week. All right. We up in the mix. Uh, one of the things that I uh, pride myself on and I appreciate is being a dad. Being a dad is cool, man. Trying to balance all of that while still, like, hustling and taking care of my responsibilities and all that. It's the best thing ever. Ain't that right, Ducky Butt? Ducky Butt. Watch this. Ducky. What you doing? What you doing, Daddy? We're doing research? Yeah, I'm doing research. What hmm. kind of research? Hmm. <laughs> What type of research are you doing, kid? Can I have a high five? Can I have a high five? Hmm. I'm special. You are special. How special are you? Baby love? Baby I'm Big Low. Yeah, Big Low. I'm Big Low. Is Big Low and Baby Low? Should we name the show Big Low, Baby Low? Yeah. So I'm Big Low. Hi, I'm Big Low. And you're Baby Low. Yeah, I'm Baby Low. Give me a high five. We call her the show. But yeah, I'll just be kicking it. Be trying to spend time with my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Make sure she cool. Make sure she feels, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate it. Make sure she has, you know, the attention that she needs. Yeah, I'm you are a special kid. The affection, you know what I'm saying? Kids need that, man. You know? And, and for me, and I think I said this on all the pods and stuff. Again, I don't know. This might be your first time listening to me, man. But, like, it's important to me to be there for my daughter, man. To be present. Not just, you know, I provide and all that. But, like, I want to just be present and kick it. How many times I'm baby low. You baby low? Yeah. Who am I? No, what did mommy tell my daughter? This is not mommy's camera. This is our camera. This is your camera. This is my Well, no, you can't hold it, but it's your camera. It's, it's my camera. No, I lied. It's not yours. It's You didn't pay for it. You can't have it. No, dude. No, dude. Stop, dude. Stop, dude. Stop, dude. Stop it, dude. Stop, dude. All right, there we go. That cool? That worked for you? I'm special, Natural Robs. 
This not the natural love, so it's the wrong vlog. This is the inaudible. Say hi, inaudibles. Inaudibles, I'm special. Right, say inaudible ruckus. I'm a romantic, I'm special. Now go get on the podcast. Hop on the mic over there, show them what time it is. Watch this, yo. What's the time it is? It ain't even on. You gotta cut it on, kid. What's the time it is, Mr. Watts? I said they, they inaudibles. Say an audible ruckus. Alright. Baby Grill is a trip, man, but she the best. Uh, she, I told y'all, she the perfect mix of like, it's me, then she's Neezy, then she's herself. But like, you can just pick the spots where it's like, oh my god, this is crazy. But she keep the energy going, man. I be needing it sometimes. I always talk about my daughter like, my daughter is the, uh, like the light at the end of the tunnel, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? I'm still on my mission and on my journey and stuff, but all the stuff and all the decisions, you know what I'm saying, that I've made up to this point, I feel like my daughter is like the 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 reward for all of that. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 pretty dope. Cause I be needing it sometimes, y'all. I feel like one of the things that I've been up against lately is uh I'm stuck in the grind, if you will, right? So a lot of y'all probably familiar uh, in Audible Ruckus, we've been going since like 2016. My career started way, way before that. Even all the stuff like, you know what I'm saying, that I've done and I've been into and everything. But like, I feel like I'm stuck, y'all, because like my, I say 95% of like my support system and, and, you know what I'm saying, my tribe, my village is all back in Detroit. Aside from Neezy and like my in-laws and everything, being here in Houston, other than that, everybody, my entire family is back in Detroit, all my friends, everybody. So it's like a lot of times I feel like I'm on this like uh, this journey, this solo journey. I know I'm not alone, but like I kind of am, if that makes sense. Right. But I know, and I'm, I know I got God. That's off top. You feel me? So I, like that's what keeps my resolve. That's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me from like just really breaking down for real. Because if I'm being honest, man, I done been burnt out for the past two years just trying to keep everything flowing, everything going ahead. And I do that, one, like, I know my breakthrough is on the way. Like, I know it's, I'm close. It always gets more difficult when you're about to break through. But then, honestly, whether or not the breakthrough is close, it don't matter, man. I made up my mind that I was going off on this journey, you know what I'm saying, to pursue my passions and, and my dreams and stuff, man. So it's like, man, you got to take what come with that. And it's not always going to be easy. You know what I'm saying? There is a, um, I was talking to some of the homies before and I'm like, man, it's a certain measure of sacrifice that you got to make, uh, in order to be successful. Now, again, you can define what success is, but just know like there is going to be, be a sacrifice. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the success. And I feel like, you know, leaving home, leaving the comfortability of my neighborhood, my city, my family, my friends and everything, that was a sacrifice. You feel me? It's, it's, it's been 10 years uh, being here in Houston and I made like progress and all of that. So like, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't complaining. I ain't crying about it, but like, just know when you see me winning, like I had to give some stuff up for it and it's, it hurts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It really do hurt. And that's something that internally, you know what I'm saying? I've been processing and been dealing with, uh, I will say, too, like, you know, the other thing is I play two sports in a sense. You know, so I'm Bo Jackson out here. You know what I'm saying? I, I do the podcasting and, and I got the agency with Midnight Club and I help Neezy with her stuff. That's the that's one aspect of it. Then the other side of it, man, I work a full time job. You know what I'm saying? Like I work in corporate America. I'm climbing the corporate ladder despite every glass ceiling that's been placed on me as a young black man. Or old black man, depending on who you ask now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm pushing up on 35, but I've been a, a marketing specialist for the past 12 years. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not easy, being, especially a lot of times being the only black person in the space, being the only young black person in the space. And then, quite frankly, what I pride myself on, being the only nigga from the hood, it like in the mix of, of what be going on, man. Because like, I feel like I'm, I'm authentically me. I know black people, not a monolith. I feel like we should be at times, though, if we had like a, a certain, just a standard ethics like code of conduct across the board we might actually have a little bit more togetherness but that's neither here nor there that's a whole nother video but personally i mean like i represent for the hood you know what i'm saying i present myself and polish myself up a certain way and all that but like at my core at my very core i'm very much from the ghetto like for real for real so i was joking with my sister-in-law last night i was like sometimes man you be hungry you gotta have a pillow sandwich and it was like well what's that sometimes you just take your ass to sleep <laughs> put your face in the pillow nigga, and you wake up the next day 
You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But yeah, I'm joking. There's food. You can get food. It's not. It ain't that hard. It was before, like at times, but like you can get food. Trust and believe. If you can't get nothing else, you can get you some food. But I'm just saying, like the grind, man. Like it be there. And so for me, I, I I don't question my abilities or my talents. I just be questioning like the direction to take. Sometimes you feel me because like I go this way and this will be advantageous, like get the money. But I can go this way and it'll be more fulfilling for my spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because like being in Houston, uh, you might think like, okay, well if everybody back at home, why don't you go back home? All the support and the love is back home in Detroit, but all the money is down here in Houston, like in Texas, period. Like it's Texas is very much like uh, a capitalism uh, state, a capitalistic state. It's all about the money down here, but it's plenty to be made. You feel me? And so I feel like even then challenging myself to pursue opportunities, not even so much the money itself, but the opportunities and like sharpening my skill set. That's what I've been able to cultivate over the past 12 years. But then it's like. Being able to, you know what I'm saying, it's toggling back and forth. I feel like if, if I had chose to just straight up do corporate America, I probably would be further along. If I had chose to forego corporate America and just jump straight full time and, and just directly into what it was I tried to do, I'd probably be further along too. But because I'm like carrying two sticks, it's like, but that's the path I chose. Um, it's all about balance. You feel me? But don't cry for me. We get into it. Just want y'all to know, man, like the, the, the grit that comes behind it and, and the grit that it takes to power through and persevere through that shit. And, and it really just comes down to like how bad do you want it? Like what's the vision that you see for yourself? What do you define as success? And how willing are you to go out there and get it? And what are you willing to sacrifice for it? Don't sell your soul now. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about none of that goofy stuff. But like what are you personally willing to give up in order to get to where you got to get to? You know what I'm saying? For me... I can tell you, I recorded the podcast on Friday nights. It's been seven years. I ain't been out on a Friday night and I don't know how long, even before COVID and all of that stuff. Now, I've gone to events. If it's like a, uh, it was like an industry event or something, I'll just pre-record on Thursday or pre-record on another day and then have it ready for Friday. But like sacrifice going out, sacrifice like the party scene. I only go out for like networking events, networking events, real networking events. You feel me? Like where people are actually getting work done. But, you know, that's kind of the, the, the spot or the space that I'm in right now that I'm trying to work through because it's like a lot of people quit. A lot of people gave up. A lot of people not even doing it no more. A lot of people realized podcasting was too hard. And then even the people that do want to collab, man, they got to get a couple more episodes under their belt first. You know what I'm saying? Not disrespect, but like you're dealing with a professional over here. I'm not a novice. I'm not a rookie. I'm not a hobbyist. I ain't none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I am a professional. You feel me? Let's take a break real quick. All right, we back. Um, no, the other thing, you know, because like I said, I really feel like, man, like I've been in this like cocoon stage too, though. I feel like I'm being prepared. And I was mentioning, like, with my career, I'm going through a transition. And I really want to use this this vlog or, like, the, the channel to really kind of walk through both sides of, of the coin, right? So over the next couple of weeks, I am going to be diving into, you know, what my career has entailed up to this point. A lot of my credentials and qualifications. Because I feel like, you know, coming out of the pandemic, a lot of people picked up stuff as a hobby or a side hustle. And so now it's a little it's a little tough to determine like who really know what they doing for real. You know what I'm saying? And like I told you, I'm a professional. Like for real. And it's like you you don't you shouldn't have to explain yourself or prove yourself, but then you kind of do because you got to separate yourself out from like, you know what I'm saying, the novices and the people who don't know what they're doing. And you know, cuz people will talk to me and they're like, "Oh, I need help with my marketing." And you know, I do marketing consulting, so I'll charge them, you know what I'm saying, my rate or whatever. And they'd be like, oh, okay, I'll give them a quote. And they'll go off to Pookie and Man Man who like do the, the club flyers and all that. And it's like, all right, but that's not the same thing. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. Um, but I did mention, you know what I'm saying, as far as like I, I've been just, just really trying to just push myself to try to learn. I've been in a lot of leadership courses over the past two years and stuff. I'm um, doing a lot of reading. So like I've been into my audio book bag. Um, but also regular books, too. And I did want to share because, like, a couple of things that really, like, helped me shape my career or, or where I am in the season of my career. This book was a real good book. It's by Rahaf Harfouche. 
and it's called Hustle and Float, right? And this is talking about how to be productive and still hustle at the same time. Like, you know, as a trying to merge my creative and my business side together, but it's like, you know, you got to find the balance between when it's time to just go for a walk and ideate and meditate and like draw inspiration from like your experiences or just the vibes of where you are. And then when to take that, when and how to take that and apply it to like hustling and grinding and stuff. So, you know, I consider myself a hustler by nature, you know, and so a lot of times I feel like if I'm sitting around doing nothing, I feel like I'm catting off, you know what I'm saying, like I'm bullshitting. But in actuality, is no, you're formulating and kind of marinating in your own vibe and, and stuff is, is building in your subconscious and everything and it's giving you kind of that, that mental break that you kind of need, you know what I'm saying? And then it makes you fresher for when you tap back in into your art or your craft or whatever your, your hustle is. And getting it going, man. So that was a, it was life altering to understand that process and to understand that my downtime, it's not really my downtime, but it's also doesn't mean that I'm wasting time, if that makes sense. Um, the other one, this one was uh, recommended to me. I read this by James Clear. It's called Atomic Habits. I think this is a good book because what happens is I, I used to be early on in my career, I was very like detail oriented, organized, just to the number. And it was cool. Like it worked in the business sense, but I was too on it. You know what I'm saying? Like way too on it outside of work to the point where I didn't just let things flow. Everything had to just be. Uh, uh. So what I did was I say the uh, not these past two years, but the past year and a half or so, I just like was just floating the entire time. And so now I'm rebuilding my own kind of routines, processes, and, and procedures and stuff. So I think that this book was real helpful as far as knowing that you don't have to have everything planned out, but like just have a plan. And that way, if you find yourself drifting too far, you have something to kind of return the center to. So I think that that one was good. And then I kind of mentioned, we're going to get into it in other videos, but squiggly careers. Because my career has not been a straight path of just get somewhere and rise up. I done had to bounce over here, go over here, do this, freelance over here, take a contract here, do this. You know what I'm saying? All over the place. But it made sense because I've been able to like capture infinity stones in my career like as a marketer like i've worked event in the event space i've worked like out in the field on the front lines and stuff i'm currently working in more of the data like analyst and, and budgeting role and then like i'm trying to level up into like senior level like to leadership basically so that's where i'm at but all the other stuff in between i didn't you know what i'm saying wiggled and, and finagled my way through there so that's where we at now but these is these is all good books i'll make sure to put the link up for y'all to check them out because um, this one, the Squiggly Careers is real good, but it's by Helen Tooper and Sarah Ellis. I forgot to, I forgot to name the, uh, the, uh, the authors. I was about to say the artist. <laughs> but yeah, those are the books that I'm checking out. Um, I recommend that y'all check them out too. Might be some game in there for you. Might help you, you know, just find your, find your resolve or, or find your next direction that you headed in like how I tried to do, man. So look out for those. And yeah, hustle hard. Speaking of hustling hard, man, like, we got commercials, man. Y'all see this beard? See this beard? I got this beard for the Naturally Named Moisturizer Duel. Here it is. Tried to tell Neezy this rocking chair ain't really working, but you know, you can't even move in it. Look at this. And London don't take naps anyway. She like her dad. She feel like she gonna miss something. But uh, we did have a. Uh, I don't know if Neezy put this on her vlog yet. Go check it out. Naturally, Nay. Like, but uh, this week we was able to go see Fifty Cent at the final lap tour. She was fire. <laughs>
right. Shout out to my dog, Philmar, man. He uh he hit me up. He was like, hey, man, I got tickets. Because I talked it up. Like, me and Neezy was on the podcast, and she was just talking about, like, the Taylor Swift concert, talking about the Beyonce tickets. And I was like, dang, it ain't really no rap artist, like a major artist that I would really want to go see like that. And I said, I guess, you know what I'm saying, as far as favorites go, it would be 50. Because, like, you know, I got my favorite rappers and all that. 50, he's a rapper, and he's one of my favorites. But I rock with 50 more so for like his business acumen right 50 been one of my influences since i was in like ninth grade well when get rich or die try it first came out you know what i'm saying it was always the rawness uh the tenacity you know of course like his marketing and like his business acumen and stuff that's always like, like what was key uh that kind of like made me gravitate uh, to his brand and everything and like how he moved but then also him just being him you know what i'm saying you could tell 50 a wolf for real like just like in how he how he conduct his business and how he carry himself so it was cool just be able to have that opportunity and then uh they had jeremiah and buster rhymes uh opening up for him buster rhymes is a legend bro and and fun fact buster rhymes i've had a you know what i'm saying i know i got my preferences and this and that but growing up we talking fifth sixth grade well, no, sixth grade is when I got introduced to Eminem. But like third, fourth, fifth grade, when I was like, oh, yeah, I like rap. Uh, Busta Rhymes was my favorite rapper as a kid growing up. Extinction level event. Um, was it When Disaster Strikes? hits and like the lyrical dexterity and all that he used to be getting it off man like so it was cool to see all them perform um and then honestly you know just like it be his final run because like 50 got all these other things that he got going on so i'm inter i'm interested to see like what his what his next couple moves are like i know he got movies coming out i know it's gonna be more shows but like if he fully stepping away from the uh from the music scene like like what's that gonna look like you know because I, I did have a, a chance we was talking about my career earlier in one of the segments but like i had a chance to read his book hustle harder hustle smarter i'm having easy put a thing up right here yeah that one helped like me navigate through some some tough parts of my career too as well just as far as because like i told y'all like i'm really from the hood so like a lot of my how I navigate corporate America is like stemmed in like principles and the same values that I had like when I was growing up in Detroit. So like I, I apply all of that when I before making a move and stuff, considering all the steps, understanding all the factors, all the variables, all the players, you know what I'm saying, that have a stake in, in, in the move or whatever, and then making my move from there. It's really a big chess game, and I like the way 50 does that. So uh, I do want to, I hope we're about to cut to a clip. Of us talking about it on the show from an audible ruckus. Check that out. Fifty is the scientist, y'all. Here's and here's why. From listening, like watching Neezy and her experience with Taylor Swift and Beyonce, right? And we know what Kanye's been doing with shows. We also know the stigma that's been on hip hop lately about the the uh the lack thereof of audience members show. showing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the live show just ain't this because a lot of these younger dudes don't really command the presence or yeah. can command the venue like that. They not selling for real, for real. For sure. 50 knows what he's doing. And now it's not the, the spectacle where like you rent out the whole stadium and walk around in a red hoodie, like how Kanye did or whatever. Yeah. But he, 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 he worked that shit, bro. I could say he's a scientist. Like he already said it was efficient, but mm -hmm. it was, it was timed to the T they had Jeremiah open, but then on certain parts, they brought Jeremiah back out. Back out for like the hooks do this, and stuff. Do that. Yeah. Buster is, is his own entity. But even then, he had filler time where he allowed for Paul Wall to come out and do two songs. 
Oh, shit. one of those songs was uh, Still Tipping, which was with Slim Thug, who Slim Thug came out. Then Slim oh, Thug up. did two songs. Oh, this, then, oh, this, this is up. great. Then, oh, yeah, I would have loved that show. Right. Then, then, hold on. Then after they go out, Scarface comes out. Who's who? Who? If you if you're not familiar, if you're not in Texas or not from Houston, or I know y'all oh. know Scarface. I'm saying I'm talking to the listeners. If you're not familiar or you don't know, like he's been battling health issues. It's, it's almost a couple times where it looked like he was about to check out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like like but but God bless him. Like like he handling his. He looked healthy and he rapped <laughs> too hard. He rapped smile and then he did uh mine's playing tricks on me. He rocked that shit. Nice. Like it, it didn't miss a beat. Didn't it looked a little winded, but. You know, my nigga like 65 years old. So like, it's yeah, like, yeah. but he rocked that shit, bro. So the fact that he brought him out and like, he, he like niggas was hype. But like when Scarface came out, nigga, like, like yeah, it's done. Yeah. Skyfather used to rap. Like, what's the fuck you asked for? Yeah, so that was a clip from us on an audible ruckus talking about the 50 Cent concert. It was live. You know what I'm saying? Final lap tour. Um, but yeah, check out the Inaudiverse, man. We got a whole bunch of shows going off, man. That's the real reason, too, man. Just been working. Finally got everything on autopilot. You know what I'm saying? Finally got into a, a situation to where I can run all the shows and still work on, like, other things and scale up. So, you know, we got Blurs in the Trap, Just Drop, The Skeeters, uh, Bench Flicks and Chill, Music Bye. Impulse, Let Me Book the Territory, and the main show. And then we got London. London, you ready to do a show? Yay! High five. Daddy, she's in the Come on. Daddy, what's in the Come on. What up? Ducky, not gonna say hi? <clears throat> this is a Saturday morning. I'm taking a break from editing the podcast. I'm editing it. I used to stay up super late till like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays to edit my podcast. Cause I was like, oh, I gotta have it done by 12 o'clock. But then, you know, to avoid burnout the way I was burning myself out, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go to sleep, wake up on Saturdays and casually get to it when I get to it. That way I'm listening with fresh ears. You know what I'm saying? I'm not rushing. I'm not all woe out from the week. You know what I'm saying? I done slept, woke up, hang with my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Neezy went to go get coffee and everything. Of course she woke up to her cleaning the house, man. It smelled like when your grandmama be cleaning on Saturdays. Got the music blast. I'm trying to get some sleep. but So I woke up. I'm almost done editing. I just took a break. London was getting restless. That's how I know I'm cold at this, y'all. Because if you could edit while having a baby bouncing around and moving and pulling on you. And daddy, 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 daddy. And still editing it come out clean. you the coldest. Ain't that right, Ducky Butt? You ready to go back in? Yeah. Then have a seat. Let's chill out. No, I chill. You don't want to chill out? That's not a jungle gym. It's a chair. She goofy. Sometimes. You said you're not goofy? Oh, you, you said you're not? I'm sorry for calling you goofy then. Can I have a high five? But yeah, man, just trying to balance it, man. My, my job going forward has just been balancing everything, man, because it do be a lot. You know what I'm saying? It can be overwhelming. It can be. It's not, but it can be. I can, I can understand how people can be overwhelmed by it, but just got to find your balance, find your peace. This is mine. Hold on. Let me show you. Come on, Daddy. Just sit out here. What's that? Mommy gonna get you, you letting bugs in the house. Go close the door. Okay. But yeah, just find your peace and create from there, man. And create, like I said, I'm creating from a place of passion and like, like I love this shit, man. Like, <clears throat> radio been, I've been doing this thing since I was 13. Uh, yeah. Yeah, since I was 13. I did my first radio commercial when I was in like, oh, what grade was I? I was in seventh or eighth grade when I did my first radio commercial for V98.7. I'm always talk about that because that's when I discovered my love for this shit, man. 
But it was cold. And then the reaction that I got, I never forget coming to school that day. I was like, I was on the radio today. And everybody, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Then a couple people, like, I guess their parents listened to jazz on the ride. It's like, yes, he was. I heard him. And so half the class was like for me, and the other half was against me. Go figure. But it was a cool experience. And I'll never forget it. Clearly. Say bye. Bye.